All right, students, I gotta tell you, I'm very excited again today. We have another active learning strategy. Let me ask you this question. Did you ever go to a restaurant and before you go in, mom or dad say to you, I don't want you to embarrass me. They don't want you to make a scene. Guess what? With this active learning strategy, I want you, I'm encouraging you to make a scene. How does that sound? All right. Students, I find the water cycle fascinating. There's only so much water in the world, and it keeps going around and around in this cycle. And I have some key words up here on the blackboard. The first one is condensation. When the water vapor cools up in the atmosphere, and it begins to collect, and under its own weight becomes too heavy, it falls back down to the earth. And it falls as precipitation. Now precipitation can be hail, it could be sleet, it can be snow, it might be rain. And when that falls down, it begins to collect in pools. And that's collection right here. And the collection could be the pond in your backyard. It might be one of the mighty oceans. It might be that lake that you go and visit up north. Finally, you have evaporation. The sun comes out with all of its heat, and it begins to warm the water. The water turns back into vapor or steam, and it rises up. And then the cycle continues. What I would like you to do in your notes is write down condensation, precipitation, collection, and evaporation. And then alongside that, I would like you to draw this picture to the best of your ability. On more than one occasion, I discovered I could have drastically improved a lesson if I would have merely incorporated an active learning strategy. While I personally love active learning, I don't want to leave the viewer with the impression that at every moment my students are on their feet. They are not. I certainly use traditional methods of instruction. Notes on a chalkboard, large hoop discussion, lecture, readings, videos, and computer-assisted presentations are just a few of the techniques I use in my classroom as well. Note, these strategies were never intended to replace tried and true methods of instruction. The problem arises when, as educators, we don't move beyond traditional methods. We worry about taking risks, so we stay within our comfort zone. Our students are truly the ones missing out. As we expand our educational practices, we begin to address each student's unique learning style. Now, let's breathe a little life into the water cycle. All right, students, I promised you from the onset that I was going to allow you, even encourage you, to make a scene. Are you ready to take the water cycle to the next level? Are you ready to make a scene? Yeah. yeah. All right. May I please have a few volunteers who would be willing to help me make some basic props. I'm going to need some clouds, and I'm going to need some suns, I'm going to need some rain. All right, awesome. Thank you. I need to see those mighty clouds again for condensation. All right, class, let's give them some wind. Then the precipitation. Can we tap on our desk? Make a little noise like it's raining on the roof. Good. Then it begins to collect. Collection pools. The mighty river, the 
mighty river is rushing. Awesome. Then evaporation, the sun comes up. Go ahead, sons. And to really drive the point home for evaporation. <laughs> And it's so hot, it's like, <laughs> and the water vapor goes back up in the atmosphere, it collects, and we have condensation, wind, precipitation, collection, and the mighty river is rushing, and evaporation, and together. on this side, and the threatening clouds right here. And the wind is going to begin to blow. This additional options moment is an easy one because you can literally make a scene out of just about any event, idea, person, place, or time period. Following a lecture, notes, computer assisted presentation, or reading material, I ask all of my students to assist me in bringing the content to life. Sometimes I have no idea what it's going to be like. I ask them to take the information and make a scene out of it. Students might work collaboratively or individually as they create a scene. Research says we need multiple exposures to new material because it helps reinforce learning. With that in mind, introduce the material, re-explain using props, return the props to the students and explain again, and finally bring your students to the front of your class and teach the material one more time. Of course, this does not all have to be done in one period, it might be done over several days. Bring those props back in a week or two for another review. What helps make this strategy a success is its novelty. Generally, students receive the information and they move on. Getting your students up, moving, using props, laughing is what helps make the information memorable. The possibilities are endless. Imagine a student flipping the light switch during the water cycle skit to help drive home the point about storm clouds and lightning. Imagine wrapping a leg as you explain the difficulty of being a patriot during the American Revolutionary War. Make a scene is fairly easy because all roles are minor and most or all students are participating. If a student does not want to be part of this strategy, no problem. I do not force them. I believe even my most troubled and distractible students are still learning. 
simply by observing their classmates in action. And now, a few more examples of how your students can make a scene. I would like you to remember that lines of latitude measure degrees north and south of the equator. And they run east and west. Now, lines of longitude measure degrees east and west of the prime meridian, but they run north and south. Now, I have a globe here. I want you to write this information right here, and then I'd like you to write that information where it says longitude on the side of the board. And if you were to extend these lines out in either direction, would they ever intersect? No. No, and that's why they're also called parallels. If I were on zero degrees latitude, I would be standing on the what? The equator. The equator. And if these rungs went up in 15 degree increments, this would be 15 degrees north, north latitude. latitude. This would be 30 degrees north latitude. 45 degrees north latitude. 60 degrees north latitude. 75 degrees north latitude. And where is my bumper right now? 90 degrees north latitude is also known as the North Pole. And I have to tell you, I like being this tall. <laughs> this is nice. Now I'm going to go back down. 60 degrees south latitude. 75 degrees south latitude. 90 degrees south latitude. Also known as the South Pole. Excellent. And these long lines right here that hold the ladder together, these long lines are lines of longitude, and they do intersect at the North and South Pole, and they're at their widest around the equator. And I think this ladder right here is a nice representation of those imaginary lines, otherwise known as lines of latitude and lines of longitude. Students, have you ever been driving with mom or dad, and you see one of those signs and it warns you that the road is about to go on an incline. How many have ever seen that before? Many of you have. I got to tell you, those signs make me nervous because my car, it's not real powerful. Here's what I want you to know about those signs. They're warning you about the rise over the run. That's called slope. Slope equals rise over run. I have our trusty ladder here again. <laughs> and now what I need is someone who's very good at running in place. Who's that going to be? All right, Derek, come on up. What I need you to do is to gently go. You're not superstitious, are you? No. All right, I need you to gently go underneath the ladder. <laughs> All right. Now, I need you. I need you to run in place a little bit. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a sign that I want you to hold, and it says run. Now keep moving those feet. Fantastic. I need two more volunteers, please. Claudia, come on up. And Josh, fantastic. I need you to hold this sign that says slope. I need you to hold the equal sign. Slide right over here. Fantastic. Now you keep running in place. That's great. And I'm going to go up the ladder. Are you still running? <laughs> and as I go up, I'm rising up the ladder. And you can see that Rise is over. Run. Slope equals. Rise, rise over, over run. run. Slope equals. Rise over run. Slope equals rise over run. Do it. Slope equals rise over run. Master. Slope equals rise over run. One more time. Slope equals rise over run. Never gonna forget it, right? No.
I explain to my students as toddlers we are completely dependent upon our parents. As we get older we reach another level and become increasingly more independent. Unfortunately some of us get stuck on independence, insisting, I don't need any help, leave me alone, I can do this by myself. It has been my experience over two decades of teaching that the highest level we can reach is interdependence. Giving repeated examples of our own working relationships with friends and colleagues will help our students understand this concept. For instance, my students generally enjoy the artwork in my room. I explain it had little to do with me. A few quick examples include my father-in-law, who was gracious enough to paint all the colorful characters found throughout my room. My friend and art instructor extraordinaire Michael designed the mural across the time machine. And my lovely wife Dawn helps me decorate my door every year. Beyond decorations, my friend Regan will willingly lend me her scales when I discuss the Klondike Gold Rush and measurement terms such as a penny weight. If I want to improve student posture and attention or just to mix it up a bit, I ask my friend Lindsay if I can sporadically use her colorful stability balls. I simply want my students to know if I had the attitude, I don't need any help, I can do it all by myself, well, the look and feel of my classroom would be drastically different. For me, interdependence has made all the difference. I want to know who's brighter, Abraham Lincoln or Yuli? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a tie. I said who's stronger? <laughs> oh, so, you see my car over there yet? You know? <laughs>